November CPI, the Consumer Produ uh, Price Index, uh, breaking moments ago. Month over month was unchanged. Year over year, unchanged, 2.2 percent. I want to bring in former FDIC Chairman Sheila Baer to react to markets and where we are in the economy right now. And it is great to see you, Sheila. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for joining us this yeah. morning. The CPI shows no inflation at the consumer level, right. although you are worried about a slowing economy, aren't you? I am worried about a slowing economy. I, I think there's some there's some financial stability risk. The, the, the underlying economy is good, but I think there's some underlying financial stability risk that stem from this very, very long period of, of near zero or zero interest rates. And the Fed needs to be very, very careful getting out of this. And so I think a lot of the market volatility, we're seeing a lot of uh, asset values really across the board decline. Uh, Deutsche Bank did an amazing uh, study that showed 90 percent of the 70 asset classes that they track were down uh, for the year. So it, it just, you know, that's what monetary policy does. It inflates asset values. When interest rates go back, those assets start to go back down. It needs to be done very slowly. And so I think to keep this economy going and to keep this recovery going, this finally filtering down to lower income workers, I really think they need to slow down. And, and, and the markets are nervous about it. They we are. Another yes. choppy session yesterday. The Dow swung 570 points. It's very volatile. Between yeah. the highs and the lows, the hardest hit certainly were the bank companies, the, the, the banks, the financials are leading this, this uh, volatility. What's your take on why markets are so uh, volatile right now, and in particular the financials? Yeah. So I think there's uncertainty. Certainty. I think uh, the, you know, we're seeing that there's always a lag in terms of interest rate increases is when they start to kick in. And uh, the Fed was fortunate last year to have the stim stimulus from the tax bill, but that we're losing that, and that will that will be less of a factor next year. So uh, you know, obviously the, the other, you know, the, the, the yield curve is flattening. That's typically a, 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 a bad omen for a, a, for a recession if it inverts. Uh, there's obviously a lot of global uh, trade issues, geopolitical risk. So and, and global growth is, is uh, slowing down. So I think that uncertainty is really playing into market volatility. But I think a, a large part of it is being driven by interest rates. This is why you see these huge reactions when Jay Powell says something suggesting he's going to slow down. You know, the markets go up, he says, you know, and then he says, no, we're going to raise and markets uh, are negatively react. So it, it is having an outsized impact. Again, I just think they need to slow down and be very, very careful with this. And, and they've got two tools to do that, not just raising interest rates, right. but unwinding the balance sheet. Well, they do, which, which they don't use. Move. Yeah, it, it is. And it's, it's curious that they don't uh, look at that uh, more. Uh, and so, you know, it's this interest rate that they uh, that they want to use and uh, it, it the knock-on impact can be quite significant I mean they also have supervisory tools so one of the reasons they've said they want to raise rates is so they can lower them if we get into a recession and so but why they're increasing the risk of recession by raising rates so that doesn't make a lot of sense to me but if they're worried about being able to you know expand credit in a downturn another way to do that is to get the banks to start boosting their capital buffers a bit more that way, when a downturn comes, they can reduce the capital and, and release more in terms of credit. But they, for some reason, they've not wanted to do that. But that's another tool that could use it that would avoid this. Well, let's talk about that, because this administration has rolled back a lot of regulations, yeah. and it certainly has set off uh, a bit of a capital spending increase, although now we're, we're questioning that. What's your take on the government-sponsored entities? That's Fannie Mae and yeah. Freddie Mac. A lot of investors say to me, look, the, the former, uh, you know, uh, leadership in the U.S. was using Fannie and Freddie's money and putting it wherever they wanted, yeah. taking the money out of Fannie and Freddie, right. and they want to see a solution for these companies. Right. Where's this going? Well, so I, I think they're right. We need, we need a solution. I mean, that's kind of the big thing that never got done, uh, and Fannie and Freddie certainly had a, <clears throat> a key role in this crisis, and they're, they're the classic too big to fail, right? So privatizing exactly. the profits, socializing the losses. So that said, I'm, I'm a little sympathetic to the government's position on investors because there wouldn't be any profits of Fannie and Freddie if, if the taxpayers hadn't come in and, and put a lot of capital in and, and, you know, basically guaranteeing all of the guarantees that they provide in the mortgage market. So I, I think longer term, though, they need to solve it. And what we don't want to do is go back to this, you know, the pre-status quo. They put them back into the private sector again. You've got these implicit government guarantees, but shareholders are making the profits and then it goes back into the government when they get losses. So that's the model we don't want. Some people have suggested an FDIC model, so just abolishing them and having a, another entity provide mortgage insurance that you buy the way you can buy deposit insurance now. That would be um, one, one approach that still provides a lot of subsidies to housing, but at least it's explicit. <clears throat> You've got a government agency doing it as opposed to a uh, for-profit entity that's, again, rent-seeking off of taxpayer guarantees. Did the deregulation that we saw happen out of this administration help growth, do you think? Did that 
uh, in fact, you know, lift yeah. uh, companies in, in, in terms of putting money to work. Right. So I think, you know, so I think there's, uh, look, yes, I think there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot to do in the area of regulation. It wasn't always smart regulation. With financial regulation, I've been very concerned with some of the steps they're taking because I don't think, I think, particularly one of the more simple metrics that we have, which is the leverage ratio. They're actually weakening that and making that more complicated. So they're not simplifying or streamlining. So I think, uh, yes, I think overall, I think just the uncertainty in the prior administration, I think the business community just felt beleaguered. They were right, never exactly. sure what was going to come So they were sitting on cash. Yeah, so, so now I think, uh, I think that has helped. But again, you need to be smart about it. You still need regulation. Yeah, you absolutely need banking regulation. Of course. I think but they need to be careful. I think the headline for me out of this interview is the fact that you are worried about the economy. I am. And, it, and it's hard for me to see that because you had 4.2% growth in the second quarter. You had 3.5% growth in the third quarter. What is it that is worrying everybody so yeah. much? Higher rates? Well, uh, from my standpoint, it's financial stability. So the underlying, the real economy is good. And you want real economic growth through wage growth, which is what we're finally getting. You know, manipulating interest rates doesn't give you real sustainable economic growth. So I'm glad we're getting out of yeah. that. I'd like to see a sustainable economy with real wage growth. But the Fed, if we have a disruption in the financial sector because of monetary policy that's going too fast and raising rates, as well as, as some deregulation they're doing now, then you're going to get a credit contraction, which will bring a recession on, which would be a terrible consequence because, you know, finally, the, the, this recovery, real, you know, real people yeah. and the lower income levels are, are experiencing recovery now. It's, it's taken, you know, nine, ten years for them to, for them to come back. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Sheila, it's great to get your sure. insights this morning. Sure. Yeah, nice Thank you, you so much. Sheila Baird joining us there.